What's up guys, my name is Andrew, I'm part of the sales team here at Zydax. Today we are showing off some benchmarks on two of our ready to roll systems. We're gonna be doing this with Call of Duty. It's been one of the most requested games that we've gotten as far as seeing the performance with both the newest high-end parts and then obviously something more in the mid-range if you're looking just to get into a gaming PC. Both of these systems are gonna be available on our website and let me tell you kind of what's inside of them. So on the left-hand side here, we have a 4090 RTX MSI Trio with a 13900K. We also are doing 32 gigabytes of DDR5 at 5600 megahertz. And then on this one, we have a 13700K, so an i7, with a 3070 Ti and EVGA model, which are pretty rare nowadays, and then 16 gigabytes of 3600 megahertz RAM. The point of the day is to show you guys commonly asked resolutions, what it looks like when you run certain settings like DLSS, because that is something that a lot of people are using nowadays, and just to show you kind of a comparative performance difference. We're gonna be doing all resolutions, and then we are gonna be keeping the settings at Ultra. Call of Duty is a fairly demanding title for a AAA game. Honestly, when people play it, you are gonna fine tune it, so your FPS should be better than this. So if anything, this is a worst case scenario. So if you fine tune it, you know, with all the different settings in the game, do more competitive, you are gonna get higher frames a second. So first off, we're doing campaign right now in Modern Warfare 2. On the left-hand side, both of these are currently in 4K. So Julian, if you wanna go ahead and start playing through, and I'll do a little bit as well. So on my side, this is with the 4090. You can see that currently, even raw, we're getting 120 uh, or more frames, depending on what's going on in the background, like 122 now. So if you are wanting to run 4K and you are wanting to get high FPS, the 4090 really is the card for you. Um, Call of Duty is not a game because it's competitive that most people are going to run in 4K, but it's something that I would do. So this kind of gives you a good idea. You can see our temperatures up here. Our 4090 is just getting into low 70s. Most of the time I've actually seen it in the 60s. And so usually temps are even better than this. And then our i9 isn't being utilized very much at all. As you are up in resolution, you are gonna be using less of your CPU and it's staying at a solid 60 degrees Celsius. And I'm now I'm at about like 134 and I just died. And then if you want to pan over here, so with Julian, you can see as he's running through this level, this is again at 4K Ultra, we're getting 64 on the 3070 Ti, around 56 on the CPU. So the system is running very, very cool, but obviously only getting about 40, 50 frames a second because 4K Ultra is incredibly demanding. And so you guys can see that. I think that's one of the biggest questions we get. It does take quite a bit of hardware to run 4K, but, NVIDIA has a solution for that, which is DLSSS. So Julian, if you want to turn yours on as well. All right, so DLSS makes a dramatic difference. Let me explain what that is, because this is a question we get asked a lot. DLSS is AI upscaling technology that NVIDIA developed for ray tracing, which is real uh, time lighting and shadows. Most people don't use ray tracing. There's a couple of games where I think some people like that added quality, but really DLSS is a big deal for a lot of people because it helps you get more frames by essentially inferring the frame instead of rendering it. So without getting too technical, all you need to know is that when the setting is turned on, you are gonna get more frames per second. The trade-off is you do wanna keep this at performance. You don't wanna go to quality or basically the higher settings. And the reason for that is in testing across multiple tech tubers, what they found is that if you go higher, at least with the newest version of DLSS, you can introduce latency. And if you're playing a game like Call of Duty, you're gonna want the fastest possible response time you can get. As you can see over here now on the 4090 system with DLSS turned on with the performance, we're getting a steady 177 to 200 frames a second. So this is what's gonna really make a big difference for you guys who have those high refresh rate monitors. Obviously there's not really anything at 4K that can do like 240 yet, or if there is, there's maybe like one monitor, but this is how you're gonna get a lot more performance out of your machine, especially if you have this uh, NVIDIA GPU. The other thing is that, um, as far as turning DLSS on, sometimes you can get softening of edges, things like that. So there are some trade-offs, but typically it's worth it as far as more frames per second. On Julian's machine, you can see even with the 3070 Ti, now that we've turned on DLSS to performance mode, he's getting nearly 100 FPS at 4K Ultra. I think what this illustrates is that if you wanna play at a higher resolution, higher frames per second, you don't necessarily need the biggest, baddest you know, computer out there. DLSS allows you to do things like this where before you really have to spend more money if you wanted more performance. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna step down to 1440p. That's something we get asked a lot and that is a competitive resolution just to show you guys what the performance is gonna look like there. 
So now we're down to 1440p, and you can see that FPS-wise, we've gone up maybe 50 to 60 frames, so we've picked up 30-ish percent. Um, and so on Julian's, you can see that his frames have over doubled. This is without DLSS turned on. So there are a lot of 1440p monitors out there. A lot of people game at 1440p. It's always it's considered the sweet spot between quality of 4K and then frames per second of 1080p. So you can see even in terms of raw performance, both of these systems are still performing very, very well. Mine over here, temps are again staying in the 60s for both the CPU and for the GPU. Um, I'm obviously not moving around very much right now are taking any shots and so that's going to fluctuate but then if you want to pan back to julian he's getting again 60 degrees on the 50s on that 3070 ti cpu staying in the 50s and he's getting you know 90 to 100 frames a second uh, obviously actually playing the game shooting things are happening around in the background so again this is without dlss and and so what we're going to do now is we're going to turn that setting on so you guys can see again once again the performance difference that you can get so you can see now on mine getting a smooth 240 frames per second. I just got killed. But the reason I think that matters is there are 240 hertz gaming monitors for 1440p and there are people who have been wanting to push that amount of frames on these more competitive AAA titles. So if you are that guy or girl, 4090 is going to be kind of the way to go. This is the first time I've actually seen a GPU consistently keep that frame time up, if, especially if you're a competitive player at 1440p. And so I think that's going to make a dramatic difference. Uh, swinging over here to the other system with Julian, you do have DLSS on, right? Yeah, so now again, we're getting 140, 150. Again, this is at 1440p, and this is ultra, guys. So this is a worst case scenario because you can fine tune this to get even better frames a second. So this would be fantastic as far as if you were doing 1440p, 144 hertz, you're gonna be able to push that competitively, you know, I, if you have the monitor that's essentially gonna match that system. And then the last thing now we're gonna do is we're gonna step it down to 1080p, which is still today the most common resolution that people play at, so you guys can see if this is going to give you that competitive level performance that you want. All right, guys, so here we have 1080p. This, again, is the still most common resolution that people play at today, especially if you're wanting to do streaming. Most streaming caps out, especially if you're wanting to do Twitch at 1080p anyway. And so if you're playing at a higher resolution, a lot of people will still export that stream in 720p or 1080p. And then for competitive, obviously, you're just trying to get as much frames per second as you can. So this is without any DLSS. So with the 4090, again, at ultra, because this is not competitive settings, I'm getting 220 to 240 frames a second, which is pretty dang impressive. I mean, there's, again, only a handful of monitors on the uh, market that will be able to push this many frames. But if you're ultra competitive, you're finally going to get the frames to take advantage of it. Panning over here to Julian's machine, he's getting a steady 100 frames plus in a very intensive gunfight scene. So this is like, again, a lot of ballistics, but this is at ultra settings, this is not competitive settings, so you should be getting better performance if you want to fine tune this. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn on DLSS to see if we can again squeeze out some more performance and that way you guys can see really what to expect out of these computers. All right, guys, so a lot of people um, will say, well, I don't need a 4090 for gaming at 1080p, but that's completely true, you don't. But if you are an ultra competitive person, this is really going to be the system that's going to allow you to push the highest levels of frames per second you can. And if you're ultra competitive, obviously every frame counts. So you can see with DLSS performance, we are bouncing between 270 to as high as 300 frames, depending on what's going on. Uh, to my knowledge, there's like only one or two monitors that currently do 320 frames a second. So this would be that setup if you were literally trying to just squeeze as much frames a second as possible because when you fine tune this, you're gonna be getting even better frames a second if you're actually doing competitive settings. So this is like ultra competitive, ultra enthusiast if you wanna to go to that level. But if you don't, if you look at here with Julian, even at 1080p ultra settings, again, with DSS turned on at 1080p, he's still getting a rock solid 140 to 160 frames a second. So this, I think, would still be an excellent solution for anybody who wants a good gaming computer and wants to have a good experience, but obviously you don't have, you know, four to five grand to sink into one. So there's no wrong answer here, guys. It really just comes down to what is your preferred method of play? What resolution are you gonna be playing at? And Call of Duty, I think, gives a pretty good example of 
just the performance for more AAA titles, things that are a little more demanding. And so, again, no wrong answer here. Both of these computers are up on our website. These are ready to ship options, so typically you're gonna get them out right away. If neither of these systems fit exactly what you're looking for, maybe you want more RAM, maybe you want more memory, you know, whatever the case may be, you can hop in the sales chat, talk to a guy like me, we can help you customize something that's more specific to what you're looking for. But we have these options just so that way it takes a lot of the guesswork out of it. You can see the performance on screen. We haven't messed with bio settings. We haven't messed with overclocking settings. This is an out of the box experience, which I think fits 99% of what most people are actually going to do when they buy a gaming computer from a company like us. So we hope this was helpful to you guys. We want to illustrate real time performance with these. If you have any questions, again, hop in the chat, talk to somebody like me and uh, you know, leave us some feedback. If you like these type of videos, uh, we will continue to make them. It's something we think that is valuable for our customers to see and that way you have more resources making your decision when you're buying something. Uh, make sure to subscribe to all of our social media, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram. You can find us on all of those different platforms and uh, we'll continue to provide as much value as we can for you guys. But thanks for tuning in.